there are different ways you can tell if you have bed bugs or not. You know, one is finding live bed bugs, also finding the dead bed bugs, the caskins or the exuvia, uh, finding blood spots, or one that really happens more often than not is people find some type of bite that they're unfamiliar with where it came from. So two places you're gonna find bed bugs the most are either gonna be in the, the bedding area, so the surrounding areas around the bed, most likely gonna be in the box spring cut on that bedding or behind a headboard, the areas that don't get disturbed very often. And the second most common place you're gonna find bed bugs are gonna be in whatever chair or couch is in front of a television that people spend the, the most amount of time at. Essentially, if they can fit into a crack or crevice, which is tiny, all they need is something the size of, or the thickness of a business card that they can travel with. I've seen them in the middle of a book. I've seen them in ironing boards. So there's no one thing that they will travel on. Um, but if I was gonna pick things in general, I would say bags, used furniture. That's probably the two things that I recommend definitely taking a second look on. So bed bugs in travel uh, work hand in hand because they're excellent hitchhikers. So your luggage being on a bed, they'll crawl up in there because of the pheromones from your stuff being inside of there. Or if people have a ball of dirty laundry. Um, but bedwigs are looking for people or for things that are gonna stay sedentary for a period of time, whether it be in a hotel bed or on a, a bus on a long trip, a movie theater that you're sitting there for two, three hours at. So when they've got a place that they can find someone's gonna sit there for a while, they go get their blood meal, then they're gonna go look for a place to hide. So keeping your stuff separate from the bedding area is always the way that, that I recommend it. So if you can put your, never put your bag on the bed, keep it in a, maybe on a hard surface like a table or some people actually put it in the bathroom in order to help prevent it. You can also prevent it by putting the stuff inside of bags. What I would recommend doing while traveling is as soon as you get home, automatically put your stuff in a dryer or put them in the wash just right away. That's gonna reduce your likelihood of having an infestation actually at your house versus just an introduction that you can get, a, get rid of right away. So finding a place to live is immediately. You know, if you have an introduction of a bed bug, it now has a place to live. Reproducing is a lot more complex. If you have just one singular male that comes in, it's not gonna reproduce. Now, if you have what's called a gravid female, which is one that's been mated, then they, as soon as they get a blood meal, then they can start popping out eggs. And then we're looking at roughly four to six weeks for those eggs to then become adults to where then, then they can start reproducing as well. So if you introduce them to an area but there's no place for them to, no, there's nothing for them to feed on, then they cannot reproduce. It is, a blood meal is required for reproduction. Um, typically, you know, you can theoretically find one bed bug at your property early on, but I would say it usually takes people two, maybe three months to really realize that they have a problem because you have to wait till the population gets big enough to where you start noticing it. Uh, so DIY treatments are usually pretty ineffective. And part of the reason is trying to see, is knowing where to treat and what to treat with. A lot of times I see people going out there and buying foggers or a liquid, or they're using boric acid-based products, and they're not gonna be effective, you know, either because one is not labeled for bed bugs, that happens a lot as well, but the active ingredients in these products, the bed bugs either have immunity to because they're just resistant to it, or they just, they're just not gonna work on them just because it's the way the chemistry works. If you start doing something yourself, you may apply something or do something that's gonna make it that much harder to get rid of them. So I would typically recommend, hey, don't make any changes um, to what you're doing. You know, if you wanna wash your linens, if you wanna wash some clothing, something like that's okay, but do not start applying any products because it actually makes the pest management company's job that much harder to solve the problem for you. There are no documented cases of bed bugs transmitting any diseases. In order for an insect to transmit a disease, it has to be part of that disease's life cycle, essentially. So malaria 
requires a mosquito. Lyme disease requires a tick. There's no diseases that require bed bugs to help transmit it. We will offer fumigation as our mainstay because it is the most effective way to get rid of bed bugs. Uh, we do offer a liquid treatment, um, but that takes a significantly longer period of time. So that's one value for doing a fumigation is you get your house back quickly and your problem is solved. If you do a liquid treatment, um, it's going to take two, three weeks to solve that problem. Educating yourself on what they look like and the signs of bed bugs is going to be your biggest key. You know, so if you look, know what a bed bug looks like at all life stages, so your adult, your nymph, you're probably not going to know, you're probably not going to see the eggs. They're really, really small and they have kind of translucent, kind of like fishing lines. So you're not going to see those ones. But if you know what the adults look like, you know what the, the different instars, the nymphs look like, that's going to be a big one. Knowing the signs, once again, you know, what the exuvia kind of looks like, what the blood spawning looks like, you know, get an idea of what the different common ways that people have bites would look like. You know, the quicker you get ahead of these problems, the faster the resolution is. These problems do not go away, they only get worse. Yeah, so if you have a, a structure, a hotel, Airbnb, apartments, you know, I would recommend getting a canine service to come through on a regular basis and have them check out each unit, just making sure that nothing's in there. Um, it's a pretty cost-effective way to avoid a lawsuit and to help get ahead of these problems, take care of your customers, and provide a safe living environment or stay for everyone that would reside in those areas. For us, after a, a, a canine goes and keys in on a unit, we will go through and visually inspect those areas to verify what the canine says. That way you have a double layer of protection that, you know, it's not necessarily a false positive. Um, but that way you can see that, yes, not only did the canine hit on it, but here's where the actual bug is and this is where the infestation is at. This area that we service, um, not only are there bed bugs you have to be concerned about, there are other bugs that will bite people as well, such as bat bugs and swallow bugs. And these are secondary pests to your primary pests, which is either you know, birds in your chimney or um, bats like in your attic, for instance. Now, there's two parts to this. One, you have to get rid of that initial problem. So if you have bat bugs, for instance, you have to get rid of the bats and then we can treat for the bugs. For... And it, you do have to do both steps. Now, if you don't, if you get rid of the bats, for instance, but you leave the bugs don't, you don't kill the bugs, they will still keep biting you. They won't be able to really reproduce very well, if at all, but they will still, still keep coming down to bite you. So knowing that aspect, I think, would be important.